welcome everyone to our webinar of the month. We are joined here today with Ari from Accessa B, and we're going to be talking about the benefits of having your website accessible. So how are you today, Ari? Jason, I am doing super well. Thank you so much for having me on. How are you going? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. This is one of the topics I had wanted to talk about because one of our clients that is doing an e-commerce site, and so he, he asked about that. And so that's when we had partnered up with you all about two months ago. And so I thought it would be good for us to have a webinar just on this topic, just for the rest of our audience and uh, to know more about having their website accessible and also about accessibility as well. Well, that's a great idea, Jason. Uh, as we spoke at this time, it is you know incumbent on every business owner to be aware of what's going on with web accessibility. So uh, uh, not to toot your horn too much, but your clients who have joined us on this webinar and given uh, me the platform to discuss this really should be thanking you because it's something that all American businesses not just those operating in e-commerce that heard about the um, some of the lawsuits, need to be aware of this change. So um, I'm super excited to, to get on board and have this conversation with you and your clients. Wonderful. So uh, my name is Ari, everyone. I am from Melbourne, Australia. I'm currently living in Tel Aviv, Israel. Uh, I've got a background in law. Uh, particularly in the not-for-profit space uh, and with a particular focus on migration law. I worked at uh, Refugee Legal, uh, which was the largest provider of free legal representation and advice to people seeking asylum in Australia. Got to work with great lawyers there. And I guess moving over into the tech space, working in this area of web accessibility, which is ultimately about making sure everyone can experience the web was quite a natural pivot. Uh, and it's something that I find that a lot of business owners do share this enthusiasm when they do see uh, how important it is. So uh, lovely, lovely uh, to meet you all and super excited to be here. So what I encourage everyone to do is go to accessibly.com slash access scan. So Accessibly spelt like accessible, just with um, out the L. I'll drop it in the chat as well. Uh, essentially, what I want you to do is grab your URL of your site and just see what the results show. Um, this is super important um, because I feel like once you, you, you can really see the changes once you do the before and after um, with installing it. But in essence, what web accessibility is, it's about providing an experience for people with disabilities on your website. So of course the experience is gonna be different um, for, the, for people without disabilities, but they need to be able to use the website effectively. This is what the crux of the requirement is. Can they digest your content? Can they order from your site? Can they effectively fill out forms go through pop-ups, go through drop-downs. These are the questions you need to ask yourselves. It's the same questions if you have a physical space, a brick and mortar store. Can a person with disabilities effectively access and use your store and effectively consume your goods or the services that you render? So that's the ultimate question. Uh, what I wanna touch on first is why inclusion matters for you practical ways to think about this and um, why accessibility, um, you know, there are so many benefits to it um, and a focus on the tax one as well. So when I guess you think about accessibility, there are so many things to uh, account for and we're gonna get to the legal thing in a second, but in terms of what the actual requirements are, in terms of the legal landscape, uh, and Jason, I don't know if I mentioned this last time I spoke to you two months ago, uh, but the most digestible and bite-sized way to really understand how these lawsuits are happening is by thinking about it like this. In 2021, there were roughly 12,000 lawsuits, so 1,000 lawsuits a month. 
There are also roughly 350,000 demand letters, uh, often resulting in settlements. So that's about 1,000 demand letters a week. That is really the impetus for bringing, uh, bringing this to the attention of many business owners. And unfortunately, many business owners first learn about web accessibility when it's too late. They've already received that demand letter or they've already been sued. But I do want to park that to the side for the moment because there are so many other benefits to it as well from an inclusive uh, inclusion perspective. Now, the main one, I guess, to think about in terms of breaking it down to numbers is that one in four people, roughly 25% of the global population, and this is the same as in the US, has some sort of disability. True, this includes some, you know, um, people who are blind and people with motor impairments, but it also includes people who are aging or people who have minor visual impairments like glycoma who do benefit for certain accommodations being made on the website. So automatically, by making your digital properties more accessible, you've invited 25% of the population onto your website, and not only just to visit it, but to stay on the site. I mean, bounce rates are a really important thing to take into consideration. Uh, SEO, for example, as well, that's one of the main measures to measure the success is bounce rates. And we know that people with disabilities are not going to stay on your website if it's not accessible. So uh, that's one way to think about it, just how how many people you're affecting to how it, you know, it's going to affect um, bounce rates on your site and ultimately your ranking, which, of course, you work so hard on um, getting a higher and higher rank. Another thing I want to speak about is, of course, your company's values. Many American businesses that I speak to, big or small, almost universally genuinely care about equality and inclusion. It's not, uh, you know, so they can sound like the rest of these San Francisco companies. They really genuinely mean it. And I think once that they come aware that this is a requirement, they are already on board. I mean, there's no business owner who sees a person with disabilities approaching their physical uh, brick and mortar space or their retail shop and locking the doors on them or not providing certain accommodations. So you have to extend those same efforts to the digital space, to your digital properties. Super imperative there. So I guess really uh, walk the walk and live up to um, these, uh, these important values of DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And also from a preventative measure, I mean, PR matters, public image matters. And of course, this should be a secondary incentive, but it is a significant incentive nonetheless. You don't want to be associated with some sort of issue around, you know, a person with disabilities making a huff and a puff about not being able to use your sites and not having those accommodations there. You don't want that to be associated with your brand, of course. People spend a lot of mo money marketing their brand um, to be positive. You don't want to be uh, associated with uh, something to the opposite of that. Another thing to think about with accessibility is uh, the lawsuits, which I do want to get back to. And I'm actually going to pause this and share a different slide and just to give a little bit um, more context is um, the tax benefit. So essentially, all businesses um, that meet certain thresholds, and I will provide further information um, to Jason to share with you for anyone who asks, can receive up to 50% back on ADA related expenditure below $5,000. So it's further making this uh, a viable option for, for your business. So I've, I've, I've just given an overview of why it's important and why it matters. Now I want to get down to the requirements. So overhead, you, what you have to understand at this stage is it's a very gray, a very nebulous area of law. So you open up ADA, of course, that's one of the applicable pieces of legislation in the US. You're not going to find anything about web accessibility. You achieve it by doing it one, two, three. All we know, 
Lots of people are being successfully sued for it. A lot of people are having to settle out of court for it. And most importantly, the Department of Justice has already affirmed twice, as most recently as this year, that websites do fall under ADA Title III. What we do know is that the WCAG is the prevailing international standard, and that standard's also been referred to and applied to US businesses. And effectively, what you need to focus on is this last sentence, which I mentioned at the start. You need to ask yourself, can a person with disabilities effectively use your website? And the beautiful thing about all our products and services is that they adhere to this international standard. So in terms of lawsuits to numbers, we went through that already. Now, what makes Accessibility different is we are the first automated solution out there. So we provide you uh, with the flexibility to keep your, the aesthetics and design of your website because we allow users to change the CSS, to change the user interface to suit them without compromising on your brand design. And at the same time, provide affordable solutions because it's AI doing the heavy lifting. Uh, so that's a huge advantage there. Another thing I want to focus on is that all our products and services were uh, developed side by side with people with disabilities. We have senior people at this company who are people with disabilities, including Michael Hinkson. He's, uh, he's blind. Uh, he also has um, some incredible stories and he's got a podcast. If anyone's uh, interested in listening to that as well, uh, please reach out to me and I'll uh, put you in the right direction there. Uh, we have a whole bunch of services as well on offer. If you're ever required to produce any documentations, reach out to Jason or to me directly. We'll be able to provide those for you. So before I get into that, uh, this is particularly important, I guess, um, if your e-commerce client is on the line. Every access, uh, access widget license that's purchased comes with litigation support as complimentary. I can't begin to stress how important that is. So you purchase it, should anyone question, sue you, send a demand letter, you reach out to us and we're going to be able to provide you with evidence showing how the site is in fact accessible. Uh, this is a very robust tool, very unlikely that you'll need to use it, but it gives all our clients that peace of mind that we're there to protect them should they need any help and we can provide them with this evidence. So let me quickly just show you what Access Widget does and then we can open up to a Q&A. So uh, Jason, are you able to see this new Summer Collection website? We can see it. Beautiful. Now, what Access Widget does and how it makes your website accessible is that it uses two different components. I'll just break through this really quickly and really simply. Uh, Jason, jump in if I am being somewhat too technical. So element one addresses 20% of the requirements. Now, what this does is it allows the user, a person with disabilities visiting your site, to change how the site looks so they can digest the content. Now, they can do so through a profile, or through enhancements. Let's just stick with the top for the moment. The profiles are a one-click um, a one -click option for the user to optimize the site for whichever group they fall into. So by way of example, the Seizure Safe profile, if they were to enable that, um, you can see here, that GIF was previously moving. It could be uh, a hazard for a person with epilepsy. But once enabled, you can see it pauses and the saturation is lowered as well. Again, it's that one click optimization for anyone falling within that particular um, group. Now, we allow users beyond the group with which, uh, within which they fall to optimize the site to suit their specific needs. And we offer over 70 different enhancements broken down to content, to color, to orientation. So this way, you can design your site the way you like, with the colorways you like, with as many flashing GIFs as you like, because we provide the availability for the user to change it should they need to. A perfect example of this is IKEA. IKEA is synonymous with yellow and blue. Yellow and blue is not the most friendly combination, not only for people with glaucoma, but for anyone with bad eyesight. Nonetheless, 
with a tool like Access Widget, you're able just to change the contrast modes. You can change it into black and white if you prefer. So you're able to freely use the site without that design compromise. Now, the second, uh, second component that we're using to make websites accessible is the AI application itself. And this is doing all the heavy lifting. This is uh, you know, what's addressing people who are blind using your website or people with motor impairments. Now, people who are blind, let's start with them. They rely on alternative text descriptions and ARIA labels. What these things are is that they explain what is on the site. Without them, a person who is blind has no idea what the content is. They don't know what the image is, as their screen reader will just read out image. They don't know what button they're about to click. The screen reader will uh, read out button. Now, if you just think about your own website, hey, just think about one page on your website. There are probably dozens of buttons and pictures. And you can just imagine what that would cost to pay someone to put that in manually. We're talking thousands. Now, also think, if you're e-commerce, when you launch new content, new, new products offerings, how again, someone would have to revisit that site and enter in all those things manually. Just think about what a headache that would be. Now, just to show you what that would look like, I've inspected this console here. In this code, there's no alternative text. Now, what our AI does is that it auto-generates it. So I'll just click Alt-1. And you can see it's generated this alt tag, uh, travel shopping, 50% off wood, retro, and luggage. I'm hoping you can see that on that screen. Now, our AI is doing that. It noticed that there wasn't an existing one, and it's scanning it, looking at the description, picked up on that embedded text, and generated it there, which is super impressive. Now, what about future images that are uploaded, like new products that you're adding? What happens then? Our AI rescans your website at least once every 24 hours. So if there is any updated content that requires such remediation, the AI is going to do it. So it gives you that peace of mind in perpetuity. So that's an important thing for me to stress there. Now, what about people with motor impairments, people who cannot use a mouse to visit your site? How do they use a website? So how they would toggle it is they'd hit the tab key. They might be using uh, an assistive technology, like a click stick, for example. But in essence, they're using just the tab key. Uh, and if I hit the tab key, you can already see there's a link that's generated for the, per for the user to skip to the content, skip to the menu, or skip to the footer. And this is something you can try, try on your own website. When you're on your website and you're clicking tab, can you toggle this drop down? Can you? I guess, move this slider if you have the sliders on your page. If you're an e-commerce site, can you trigger the pop-up? And if so, does the focus land within the pop-up? Can you populate the quantities? Can you proceed to checkout? Or can you leave the cart and continue from where you, where you left off? These are some huge web accessibility challenges. Any developer will tell you this, and our AI excels in remediating them. So I hope that gave you a really good understanding in a digestible way of how our AI works to make websites accessible. I hope I gave you a plethora of reasons, the, the tax credit, the very real risk of uh, legal litigation, and also about how many people this affects and also that it's just the right thing to do. One final thing I do want to leave you with before sending you back to Jason or opening this up to a QA and a is... The reality going forward is web accessibility is simply the cost of having a website. It's simply become the web standard. It's not going anywhere. The Department of Justice has reaffirmed again this year that it does fall under ADA Title III. And they've already let us know that in Q1 of 2023, they're going to be uh, coming out with some specific guidelines of what American businesses need to adhere, to which they need to adhere. So. What we're looking at is now, don't wait any longer. This is a web standard. It's simply the cost of having a website. Speak to Jason. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to me. I am Jason's contact at Accessibility. Um, 
thanks for letting me speak with you. Thanks for letting me share with you. Uh, Jason, over to you um, for, for whatever you want to discuss next. Love it. Love it. Uh, we actually have a few questions here. <laughs> so I'll, I'll beautiful. I'll, yeah. So one is, is this uh, option open to all platforms, WordPress, Wix, Weebly, Square, on and on? Great question. Uh, we are platform agnostic. There are very few exceptions to that. Uh, but in essence, we integrate with all of the CMS platforms that you just mentioned, Shopify, uh, Wix, WordPress, Weebly, we integrate with all of them. Uh, and they're super straightforward integrations as well. Okay. And then the next question we had, uh, you mentioned it helps SEO. Can you explain a little more on how it helps on the search engine optimization? What I'm going to do, bear with me, uh, while I'm talking is going to drop a link to a blog post that someone from our content team uh, wrote up because it goes through it in more depth. But in essence, in essence, people with disabilities, when they visit your site and it's inaccessible, they're getting off the site. It's not good for bounce rates, which we already, which I already discussed. And I also know this from personal experience. One of my colleagues, Sheldon, I always ask him, like, what happens? He goes, I just leave the site. And we also know, um, I guess this is less related to SEO, that People with disabilities um, are, from Nielsen data, we know this, are one of the most loyal customer bases out there. So if they find something or business that does have an accessible website, they're just going to keep coming back because the sad thing is they don't have those options. And I also know this from my friends and colleagues who work at this company. They constantly shop at the same pharmacies online the same supermarkets online, same clothing stores, et cetera. Now back to SEO. Um, so the bounce rates is obvious is an obvious one. The second thing is the alternative text that can also boost, you know, with search terms, et cetera. Okay. Uh, one of the other questions we have, has anyone been sued? And if so, how did you help out in that situation? Great, great question. So, most small businesses are actually, not most, a significant amount of small businesses first learn about web accessibility after the fact. They've been sued and then they start Googling it and then they come to us with these pre-existing legal issues. What we do, uh, many states offer some sort of grace period where you have X amount of days to rectify the areas of inaccessibility on your website and we help them with that. And in a lot of those circumstances, we've helped them uh, reduce their liability or alleviate it completely. Uh, so that's how we've helped there. In terms of going beyond that, people installing our solution, after the fact, um, from a personal anecdotal level, I never dealt with the business, installed, purchased, and then with no pre-existing legal issues, then came back to me and said, hey, Ari, I need the litigation support package. Never happened to me, which is a great thing. And I know company-wide level, as far as I'm aware, and I think this is still the case, not one of our clients has ever been successfully sued after installing our solution, which is incredible when you think about that we have around 200,000 paying clients. So it's, it's incredible, uh, incredible stat. Um, so yeah, that's... That's my answer to that question. Okay. Okay. And uh, let's see, was there any other questions that were asked? You talked about the tax credit. Is that a one-time tax credit? So I think it's your, I'll send a PDF with more. What I advise is to speak with your CPA or your accountant. They'll be able to elaborate more. I think it's for uh, every year for which you, make that ADA related expenditure. And so long as you meet the other thresholds, i.e. amount of employees or the revenue, um, uh, there's a cap on revenue, you'll, you'd be entitled to that for the tax credit. Awesome. Yeah, I, I also just dropped in my email as a chat. If you do okay. want to reach out to me, please, please let me know that you've come through Jason Lockhart and his team um, at Kitchen Bath uh, and Bath Marketing Solutions. That will help me tremendously just so I know who you are. Um, and yeah, more than happy to answer any of your questions. It's one of the huge value adds that Jason can offer you. You 
don't need to go through our chat, even for simple questions and speak to some robot. You can come directly to me um, and we'll be able to help you out. Lee, I'm so, I'm so happy I was able to convey that um, in a way that everyone can understand. I mean, I had no idea, like, again, my background's in law. I didn't know all these tech terms. So if there is still anything you wanted to clarify, please reach out. Um, I guess the main takeaways, and I'll just go through this quickly, it's simply the cost of having a website now. Don't wait to the 90th minute, if there are any soccer fans out there, to get this done. It, it, it's coming. There is that very real risk of litigation. We're talking a thousand lawsuits a month or a thousand, um, you know, demand letters a week, uh, sorry, a day, which have re resulted in out of court settlements. Great for SEO. Great for your um, for your for your image, your company's image. You can get the tax credit. Lots of pros, zero negatives. So, get on board. Awesome, awesome, and uh, we appreciate your time, Ari. And uh, for everybody else, we appreciate you being here today. And next month, we're going to be talking about VAs, benefits of having a VA for uh, home remodelers and interior designers. So that's what we'll be talking about next month. And we appreciate you all here, and we hope you have a wonderful day, great week, and we hope to see you all here next month. All right, have a good day.